Hi, this is Jeremy and welcome back to Blender for Designers. Got a quick tip for you today. A couple of you guys have been asking about this, which is getting die lines into Blender. And it's fairly straightforward, but there's some like not obvious bits, so I thought I'd go over it. So, spoiler here. What you gotta do is you gotta export your die lines as an image, import them into Blender, and trace your geometry over them. Let me explain. So right here I got a set of die lines, and let me kind of show you what these die lines are. It's a box, but it's it's kind of a non-standard box. So we're taking a look at, um, so it's, it's arranged vertically, and it's actually very similar to these. It's not the same die lines, this is a different product, but it's got a very similar thing. So if we look at the top here, we can see that we have you know two flaps over here, and it's very similar here, it's a different shape for the top flap. And then you kind of go up a little bit, and you can see that the bottom flap is sort of the same way, and you can also see the bottom flap is upside down. So what you actually end up doing with that is, I showed this in one of my previous videos, is you fold this over, if I can get this on camera here, and then so those these flaps go over each other, that's in here, this is the, the I guess that's the right side? Yeah, so it's this flap and that flap, and then so those tuck under each other, and then this goes over here, like that, and so that's this top flap going over this very bottom part. Now you might be tempted to export Bezier curves into Blender. These are Bezier curves in Illustrator. Blender does Bezier curves. It's tempting. Don't do it. I've tried it. Believe me. Bezier curves in Blender have a totally different purpose. They're designed for motion curves or like long pipe-like objects. Um, they can do some very cool things, but this is, this is not what you want to do. What you want to do is you want to export an image and trace over it. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to go to, uh, the, my menu is off screen, but we're going to file, export, export as. And then we're going to, here, I can do it here, and we're going to just do the die lines. We're going to do it as a PNG and definitely use artboards, uh, and we'll do it 150. So PNG, same thing, and it's got some nice colors, so it'll be easy to use. So, and this is how you get a image into Blender. So I'm going to uh, get rid of myself for a sec, and you go into here, and then you go on this, this tray here, this little tray on the left, and you can hit the N key to bring it up. And then the background images are right here, and you can go add an image, and then you can go open your image, which I put in die lines. And it doesn't show up yet because it only shows up on like your orthographic or camera views. So we're gonna go to one of those. We're gonna go to, to hit numpad one to go to your front view, and then hit five to go to front orthographic. And you see it already, but we're actually gonna isolate it to one single view. And you can just barely see it because it's only outlines. Um, we'll fix that in a minute. So what we want to do is you want to go full opacity and we want to put it in front. And then it's we're going to only want to do it in the front view because we want different views for different sides. And we to fit it to the right box, we have to actually go ahead and get the size of the box. So let me hop right back into Illustrator and uh, bring up my transform palette and then let's get the size of the box. So what we want to do here is take a look at the transform palette. And you want to select these and you get the width, which is 138.1. The height here, which is 140, and then the depth, which is this height, which is 63.5. And so conveniently enough, I've already written that down. All right, so I'm going to take these units, and I'm going to go into Blender. And I've already set Blender up for millimeters. So I'm going to create a cube. And then the location is 0, 0, but we want the, uh, the dimensions to be, uh, let's see, 138 by 63 by 140 and that should be that should be right okay cool so that's that's our that's the shape of our box now i want to get our die lines in there so we can kind of see where we're going to start carving stuff so we're going to go in front orthographic view again and scale our die line image to the right size so it exactly matches our box i'm just going to get those red lines to go ahead and match with those Great, and then I'm going to just move the Y value so this is right in front. And I actually can just do this right here so this matches kind of perfectly. Okay, cool. So that's how we get die lines into Blender. Now, you you know, this is, this is only good for the front, so we can do the same thing on the top. So we hit 7 on the top. And then we can just add another, we can add another image. It's basically the same image. So add image again. Sorry about the uh, siren there. And we're going to just put this on top. It's going to be the same image. Excuse me. All right, so that siren has passed the, the benefits of living in the city. Um, so now we have, okay, we have our top image loaded, and it's you're going to want to be the same size. 
because it's the same size basically. So we can just paste that. And then use there you start to see. Again, it's really clear, so it's actually kind of hard to see. But then we can use our y value. And then we can just move this. And we can move that, of course, 100% opacity right in front. And I apologize, there's another siren. All right, uh, there's obviously some sort of emergency happening in my neighborhood. But um, so yeah, so back to Black 2 Blender, we have the, the flat put exactly in the right spot. And this is actually super useful. Um, cause now you can trace this as you create your tie lines. Um, so let me show you how to do that. So first of all, we're going to go, so you can see we already have the, we have the top or the front and then the top and I haven't done it exactly. They're probably not perfectly centered, but, um, it should be fine for what I'm doing now. So I'm just going to start forming this box. So I'm going to go ahead and create a, uh, bevel. Oh, actually one thing we're going to have to do, I apologize for not doing this is, uh, apply scale, uh, uh, control A and you want to apply scale so we have the have it at the right spot So that's why the modifier is coming in unevenly and we should do that before we unwrap anything So we're gonna go ahead and apply the bevel modifier again Great and uh, just a little bit there and then go to like three segments And make it, make it a little bit a little bit bigger So yeah, there we got a nice little modifier on there um I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to go ahead and save this and then, um, and then I'm going to apply that modifier uh, for reasons you'll see in a minute. Uh, just because we're going to, what we're going to do is I'm going to trace out this, this tab. Uh, so I'm actually going to go ahead and move this to center it just a little bit. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into edit mode and I'm going to grab my knife tool and you do that hitting K. And then you can kind of go like this and you can literally just trace this out. I'm going to do is I'm going to do this angled, but you can totally do this freehand. Uh, and I'll explain why in a minute. And then we're going to go to the corner there. Actually, I think I'm going to go to the corner on this one as well. So we're going to go to here, and then we're going to merge them, Alt M uh, at last. Yeah, there we go. So they're merged. Um, so what we can do is because these are all have to be at the same plane, we can do scale Y zero to keep them all aligned. Same thing here, scale Y zero. And then you can probably just eyeball this. Um, so now you've got like a way of dividing this. And of course you can now go ahead and if you want, you can actually go ahead and raise this tab a little bit. So we're gonna hit that and I'm gonna do everything. So then I'm gonna go ahead and extrude this. Remember I said, um, I said extract and I meant extrude. Extrude is you hit uh, the letter E and then you hit, then you can move this in whatever direction you want. I just want to move it in Z slightly. Uh, so Z and we'll just move it slightly. And then I'm going to take this edge, this is why I beveled first. I'm just going to bring this down a little bit. So there, I've already created like a little bit of a tab. That's actually probably a bit more than I would want. Uh, so let me just get rid of this edge. Do that and then get rid of this edge. And then we can just, so we can take these out and then we can play with the height there. So now I'm gonna go ahead and do the same thing to the left and to the right tabs. Just gonna go ahead and speed through that. Uh, you basically just duplicate the images again and put them on the left side, right side. And remember that you have to be in orthographic mode and you have to hit the three key to go to the right side and the sh control three to go to the left side. Um, so again, I'm just gonna speed right through the same, same kind of idea and you'll get those nice little tabs. So there you have it you have kind of carved out of a little die line here. And I will leave the, uh, the UV unwrapping for later tutorial or for an exercise for you guys. So thanks, this has been a quick tip. It's a short video because it's a short week here in the US. We actually have Thanksgiving, so I'm gonna be leaving pretty soon. And um, so thanks, uh, like and subscribe if you like and subscribe. Um, and of course this would not be a video without me plugging my wonderful app, Mockup 3D. I'm just going to give you guys a little teaser here. This is a new fun feature I'm working on, and I'm not even going to explain it to you. So with that, have a good holiday, 
even if you're not in the U.S., please uh, enjoy and be thankful for what you know for what is in your life. I am very thankful for for lots of things, you know, like my family that I'm going to see and the fact that I can do things like this that I really enjoy. So, thanks again. Have a good one. Bye bye.